All right, welcome back to CIS 126. This is week, this is day two, week six. Uh, we're continuing with our game. Um, on Monday, we um, added some polish to the game over screens. Either if you win or you lose, we set ourselves up to restart or exit the game. Um, we worked on that. We saw the ability to make a pop-up screen which is simply jumping between the timeline to display a particular element. And then the code, which was about uh, exiting the game or restarting. Now, of course, that can have a lot of polish as well. You know, what does it mean to restart the game? Do I want to change my difficulty level? Am I gonna start at a certain save state in the game and all of this stuff that um, could be further polished? Well, we'll see about getting to that polish later. And some of the extra stuff we started to do as part of the requests, um, character select started to be set up. Um, we still have the inventory system to add a little bit more. I want to do the cutscene username. We'll see how it goes for some of these. Um, but the last thing we did was starting to set up this character select which we saw, we we focused on the code part of it, which is this final chunk down here, which was setting up a new type of variable, a new type of way to keep track of things, an object. And we saw the syntax for this. It's still the same, VAR, create a variable, create a thing, call it something but then it has a data type of object and it has a syntax different than we've seen before with these curly braces. And then we've got these properties and values, the name of the character, what type is it, hit points, magic points, whatever we wanna do. And then I wanted to do a little bit of like randomness with luck. Um, maybe there's a value of luck that would be interesting to add to your game. Um, randomness in a game makes the gameplay different when you play. And what I was setting up here was a function that selected luck. That function was the last thing we did here, which we're going to change uh, probably next time, or probably after the music stuff. But uh, so here was a way to pick random luck. It wasn't fully random. We will add real randomness to that soon enough. But that introduced another type of object, an array, which is a collection of data. Uh, an object is a collection of data, but more complex data where you invent a property and add values. An array is a collection of data, much simpler, just a sequence of data. And it can be numbers and words and Boolean and so forth. And so here there were four possibilities of luck. And we said, okay, give me luck number two. Starting from zero, which I pulled, put as null, you know, don't pick null, null luck. I don't know. You don't want null luck, no luck. So item number two, starting from zero, zero, one, two, the mage will have 50 units of luck. The warrior will have, you know, position one, zero, one, 25 units of luck. And the, uh, uh, the thief will have fourth position. So uh, zero, one, two, three, four, will have a hundred units of luck. Very lucky thief. So we'll make that more random that when you play the game, it will randomly pick between those values. Right now we're telling it which value we want. We'll rewrite that code a little bit later. But this is to start to set character selections behind the scenes. Obviously on screen, I want to have a screen somewhere like when I start the game, I wanna have a new screen where you've got characters to pick from. And those characters that you pick visually are going to be tied behind the scenes into the code of these various properties. And as I had noted here, well, the purpose of making these characters and such is that different characters have different attributes which affect gameplay in different ways. So we'll add that polish as time goes on. I want to put this to the side for the moment and do one more sort of like important part. Everything's important in the game, but one of the more important parts is music, sound. Right now, it's a game with no music. 
But as soon as you start to add sound and music, it gives you more of a feel and a vibe to your game. There's a boss scene. Well, how about we put some boss music? There's a mysterious scene. Well, how about we put some scary music? You won the game. So how about we put some happy music? So we'll start to look at music today. And then depending on our time, we'll get back to the um, character select stuff, as well as the other to-do items, the inventory system, the cutscenes, enter your name sort of thing, movement, etc. This needs a little bit of setup, and I forgot to bring my USB drive that had the setup, which was uh, some music samples. So I'm going to grab these music samples from YouTube. Um, if you took part one last semester, you remember that you can go to YouTube and go to the music library and download music that is copyright free, that is safe for you to use. We're not going to use the famous popular music of your favorite artists. That would be a copyright violation. We're going to use the music that YouTube gives us for free, which is often instrumental music, which is often what I would want in a game. I want background music to play. And what we're going to learn here, of course, then you can do it with any kind of music. But to be compliant, to be legal and such, we're going to use the free music that YouTube gives us. To remind you about that, how to access it. Well, if you go to YouTube.com, there's the main interface, of course, about I'm going to search for some music or I'm going to look at some shorts or whatever. But we don't want that. We want to instead log into the YouTube studio. So this would require that you log into YouTube. Uh, if you don't have, if you're not logged into the YouTube account, you're not going to have this, these other options. Um, I'm logged into YouTube here and on my icon on the top right, I can go to YouTube studio. We saw this last semester where here is if I wanted to upload YouTube videos and become a YouTube star, well, here's my dashboard where I can do all of that. But what I want is to be able to use the, um, the library. There's the audio library and the new version of it. I forget its name, but it's something else like music collection beta something. In my case, on this particular account, I have on the menu here, audio library. If yours would say something else, it's the same idea. But the point of this is here's where I can access their collection of thousands of sounds, either music like soundtrack, or sound effects. I want the sound of a breaking window. They have it there. I want the sound of a tree breaking. They have it there. I want the sound of an alien growling at you. They have it there. And this is one of the best ways to get sound clips and such. Uh, again, with the topics of copyright and all of that, this is where you want to go to get free and legal sounds to add to your project. Because it's a long discussion, but if you borrow a famous song and put it in your project, that's illegal. That sounds harsh, but it's true because you didn't pay for the right to copy that sound onto your project. You say, well, I have, you know, I have a subscription to Spotify. I'm paying for it. No, you're paying for the right to listen to the music, but you're not paying for the right to copy it or to alter it or to use it for a purpose. Um, these, this whole issue of copyrights is a, is a long discussion, but short answer for our class you're going to go to YouTube, you're going to log in, you're going to go to the uh, YouTube studio, which is on the top right icon. And then from the left menu, you're going to have audio library. As I do the lecture, please only myself will I play the sound. For all of you, do not play the sounds. That's going to get annoying. Make sure your computer is muted. You can check your sound and such later. You can use headphones, but don't just start playing sounds and distracting everyone or me. So I'm going to, I have the ability to play sound here. For example, just this random first sound. It's my sound. I don't know if you all can hear it at home. I cannot hear it here in person. So what's this thing doing?
All right, so there's a bunch of songs here, a bunch of music here. I can search um, search or filter by genre, by mood, artist, duration, etc. And then I am able to download the sound and then we'll use it in animate in a moment. So I had a few that I had prepared. I forgot to bring my USB drive. So I'm going to grab a few random ones from here. Because the important part is, well, how do I add the sound to my project? What particular sound you might use is up to you. But I, I want to play a soundtrack. I want to play background music at the start of my game here. I want to play different music when the game actually starts. I want to play a different music when I win and a different music when I lose. So I want at least three different background musics. I want sound effects, for example, when I open the door here, like creaking, the sound of a creaking gate. I want the sound effect of, you know, breaking the tree, breaking the window, etc. I want the sound effect of the creature growling at me, whatever. And I can find those at the YouTube audio library. Let's see. Just to have something to work with. I'm going to get that one as one of my items. Actually, one more thing. Oh, you can use this audio in any of your videos. Oh, yeah. So um, within the library here, there will also be attribution not required, attribution required. The best ones to use are the ones of attribution not required. It's just, yeah, download them, use them, do whatever you want with this music. If you choose the other option, you can use it, but then in your project somewhere, you have to add the note. Mary Go Silent, light film by Kevin MacLeod is licensed under Creative Commons 4.0, this link. Here's the source artist. You have to have to put this chunk of text somewhere in your project, maybe in the about screen, in the help screen, a credit screen or something. I know I'm gonna forget to do that. And if you don't do that, Technically, then you're in violation of the terms. Technically, YouTube can sue you. All of this annoying stuff. Yeah, that sounds kind of harsh, but the law is a thing. So to avoid having to do that, you can do your searching here and only show me the attribution not required, where I don't have to do any extra steps, just use the music. And again, you're not going to uh, copy off a song off of Spotify or Pandora or off of a CD or whatever. You're not going to take the Star Wars music and put it into your project, the Game of Thrones music. But it really will work well in my game. Yes, but then you have to pay for the copyright, and that's going to be thousands of dollars. So it is a whole thing. It's a legal thing. So you're not going to use official known music, famous music. You're going to use the music from YouTube here. And you have equivalent, you know, rock style music, cinematic style, epic music, jazzy style, Game of Thrones style music. Say that this sound here, it doesn't fit with my project, but I will use it just to, just to be able to do the lecture. Again, I had a few ready to go, but I forgot to bring my USB. Line. So Headlands will be the music that will play when my game starts. I will download the file. It's an MP3 file. I would put that file into my project folder. In my project folder, put my sound in there. I, my music file, it's in my project. It's in my project folder. Now I need to import it into Animate. I need to set it up in my library so that then the code can play it at the right time in the right way. So in Animate, I will File Menu, Import to Library. After I downloaded that file, I can then add it to my project easily.
gets added to my library. I've got a brand new item right there. I can preview it. So yeah, this is not going to fit with the haunted house theme, but uh, I can change it later. So this is in my library, and I need to do something similar, like what I did with the keys, where I wanted to grab an item from the library to put onto screen. I need to add linkage to that sound file so that the code can grab it from the library and play it at the right time in the game. Just like the keys, I can. Um, I need to edit the properties of that I item in the library. I can uh, select my sound file, click the little info icon down there. It brings up the properties. Slightly different compared to a graphic element. We have to jump over to the actions panel here. Notice that's different than when I edit a regular library item as a regular library item, a visual one, there's advanced, and then I can export for action script. Sound file, when I go to its properties, I have to jump over to the action script panel, and then it's the same thing after that. Export for action script, meaning you be able to use this via code. It's gonna give me some class which I can name as I wish, which I should. Simply rename it. We we'll call this MUS because it's going to be music. And I'll call this music title. This is music that is going to play on my title screen. This is the instance name. This is the linkage that I will use in the code. If I leave it as it's suggested to me, I can use it just fine like that. But it's a big name. I might as well name it in a way that I like, that I'm used to, because my music files are going to have a prefix of music, music for the title, music for the main, music for the end bad, music end good. Set up linkage. It's going to complain about you. Uh, well, I should probably update first, then OK. I think the same I think the result is the same but I usually do update first it's gonna take the name and then when I click okay it's gonna do that complaint about you have not created a linkage name for this before would you like us to create it yes of course that's what I'm trying to do create action script connection don't bother me about that again now that has linkage just like just like the keys. And this music I wanted to play during my title screen. So in scene title, in my code, My code here, I will create similar to what I was doing here, just visually uh, for my character select code. Uh, I'm gonna create a little comment down here to say background music code. This is optional, but personally, I like to organize my code that way by commenting it and you can make a visual comment that stands out that is interesting looking so that as you browse through your hundreds of lines of code, so far, I've got 160 lines of code only on this scene. Never mind every other scene here. But as I browse through my hundreds of lines of code, something visually different like this will catch your attention as you're scrolling through your code to find your sections of code. Background code. We'll say first at the top, set up the ability to use sound. This is some code that I'm going to add, but I want to add it to the top, to the very beginning of the app, because the order of the code matters, usually. I want to be able to set up to do music right away and then add the music on line 160. 
So I'm making myself the note that first at the top, where we have the um, top, similar to we had, okay, stop us at this frame, activate touch capability, write a trace. Um, at the top over here, activate touch mode. We're going to add a new line of activate sound mode. doesn't know that you want to do sound through code until you activate it with one line of code, and then you'll be able to do that. It's going to first assume that you're going to do sound like we learned last semester by adding the sound directly to the timeline. Well, that limits us. As if you remember from last semester, it limited you in terms of this sound is overlapping with that sound, or this song sound doesn't play at the right time, and how can I stop my sound or pause it or whatever. It's limiting to add sound in the timeline. It's more powerful to add it in the code, but it requires the right setup and code. So near the top, I'm going to add the lines of code here. Import space flash dot media dot sound. It's all lowercase except for the S in sound. As per my notes, there's another one here, flash dot media dot sound channel. One more import flash dot net dot URL request. Very specific spelling on that. Create sound mode. What is the what do these do specifically? Don't worry about it. It's just necessary for all of this to work. In order for sound to work via the code, that line there, in order for us to be able to edit the volume and such of the, of the sound via code, and in order for us to reference a sound file in our folder, basically these three lines here. Point is that if I want to be able to do sound through code, I have to activate these features first at the beginning, near the beginning of my code. I only have to do this one time, and since I'm doing it at the very beginning of the project, it will allow us to do sound throughout the whole project. Sound is going to work similar to when I grabbed those keys from the library. I created a variable to hold the key. I'm going to create a variable to hold the sound and then add it to the stage, sort of, and then set up for controlling to pause it or to change the volume, etc. Back to the bottom here. Create a variable to hold the sound. VAR, create a variable, and call this music. All my music files will have that prefix, music. This is music happening in the title screen. Later on, when we do the end screen good, right? We're gonna, that's gonna make sense when we get to that later. Colon. The type. This variable is going to hold something, some type of data. We've seen a variable can hold a complex object, a variable can hold an array, a variable can hold etc. numbers. This variable is going to hold that music. Similar to when we set up the keys, this variable is going to hold a key from the library. Oh, just like the key, that linkage name. That's why I have a nice short linkage name. So I can type it easily or copy and paste it easily. This variable is going to hold data of the type of that file. And we will then set that to a new instance of that particular sound. This is exactly like the key. Remember, I had noted 
people make a mistake that, okay, I've got parentheses here, so I need parentheses here, which is wrong. No parentheses here. And then people might get confused. Okay, I forgot the parentheses here. That's wrong. So it just has to be this way. Name of an object. What type of object? No parentheses. New instance of the object. Which object? That object with parentheses. That's just the syntax. That's the way it has to be. Like when we did the keys, because we're grabbing an item from the library. So the weird thing then is, um, code is interesting because it uh, has to be very specific. And I've, I've said it over before that computers are dumb because you have to program them perfectly. And part of the weirdness here, the dumbness of this is we've told, we've told, an, we've told animate, I'm gonna use this sound. But then you have to fully tell it, well, the way I'm going to use it is to play it through the speakers. So I have to then create a variable for playing the sound. This variable here holds the sound, but then nothing happens with it. This next variable is about playing it. The AR, music, title, play. Then sound channel. So that's different to make sure you don't type muse title again. Why? Well, this is just the way it has to be. Sound channel is the ability for then us to play the sound, rewind the sound, lower the volume, pause the sound, etc. That is a that is an equal to music title. dot play, parentheses, and this is further explaining how is it going to play, so zero and one. So um, the dot play right here is saying start from the beginning, zero, that's a zero, not a one. Start from the beginning of the sound, zero or start us, you know, 10 seconds in, 10 seconds in, track of time in milliseconds, fractions of a second, 1,000 milliseconds means one regular second. So here I'm saying play, but skip over to the to the first second, skip the first second, start at one second and play, or skip us over to, you know, um, 23 seconds, that would be 23,000. So skip us over to 23,000 seconds, skip us in 23 seconds, and down to the fraction, 23, one, skip us over to 23.1 seconds of the music. Well, no, I want to start from the beginning of the music. And then the um, comma one is replay the sound one time. Play the music completely. When it ends, we're done. Or if we want to loop it, you know, three times over and over, just put a big, big number there. In my case, I want it to play one time when the when the music plays on the title and it's over, it's done, it's silent. Okay, start playing now. If you wanted to keep looping in the title screen, just change that loop number there to anything else. So setting ourselves up to use music, to be able to play music, And to actually play the music, then play the music. It's going to be music title play.
Okay, before this part. Um, maybe before this, checking my notes here. Before this. I'm gonna test my project here. Uh, this should be enough for the music to play. We need to polish it up a little bit, but I wanna make sure this, this part works first. So there we go. My game is now gonna have music. Cool. I'm going through the various screens here and the music is playing. So create the instance of the music, create a variable that is about playing the music. And then we say, yeah, play the music from the beginning, loop it one time. That's the very minimum that I need for this to work. It's polish, however, because computers are dumb. And what I want to do is when the when the game, we have to think about it in terms of the game is going to be playing on a device, on real devices. This is ultimately for a real Android or iPhone or whatever. And what's going to happen, what happens on your devices, especially if you're using, you know, your main device, what happens when you're using your real device and you're playing a game on your real device and you get a phone call or you get a text message or you have to switch to an app or whatever. If you switch from one app to another, Unless you program it, the music is still going to play. I was playing my game a moment ago and I had to switch over to my email. The music's still going to play. Now, this is something that you have to believe me on. And again, I've taught this class for years, so it's true. But if you don't program it, the music is still going to play and you're doing something else, which reminds you computers are dumb. So we have to further set this up. Variable. Keep track of the music playing so that we can pause music when needed. This is going to happen behind the scenes. You're playing your game. You get an email. You have to switch to your email app. You switch to your email app. The music will stop. You know, that sounds basic. Like, of course, that's what happens. I don't want to hear my music in another app. But it's not automatic. We have to program it and set it up. So we need a variable to keep track of. Right now we've played, you know, we started at we started at frame zero of the music and we made it up into, you know, frame 10,000 of the music. Let's let's note that, that the music played up to frame 10,000. And then when we pause to go elsewhere, when we come back, we'll start playing it from 10,001. Start playing from when we last left off. The end result is that we've paused the music and restarted the music at the last moment we stopped it. And seamlessly, it'll just work. But the logic of it is I need to keep track of when the music was playing to pause it to restart it at that point. Okay, another variable. Music title pause. If I have music title play, I'll call this one music title pause. This will hold the data of a number so we have units that are happening here. We start at the beginning, zero, then one, two, three, 10,000, whatever. It's a number. The beginning that is set to zero because um, because the um, we want to start at the beginning of the sound when the game starts. Based on the pause number, we start playing the music. Title play, the variable I created on line 1069, that is set to music title, play it from music, title, pause, loop. So that line 
looks almost exactly the same as line 169, but be careful because there's the change of not having the VAR part. Do not put the VAR at the beginning here. On line 170, VAR means create a variable brand new to use. Line 176 is saying use the variable. Notice I also do not have the sound channel there. When I create the variable, I explain what the variable is made of or what it can hold. But when I use the variable, I just use the variable. I don't have the VAR. I don't have the data type. I just say play it. And notice the difference here also, instead of writing zero, it is connected to the variable that when the game starts, of course, the music is at zero. So start at zero. But in a moment, the code, when we pause the game, it'll pause at frame 10,023. So then that number will become 10,023. When I return to the game, replay the music at 10,023, in a sense, I paused the music and replayed it, restarted it from the last time. For the moment, this behaves exactly the same, should behave exactly the same, that it starts at the beginning. We then add different soundtracks and move to different screens to will um, make more sense. Okay, so it still works the same, but we're setting this, we're setting ourselves up so that when we pause the game, work more correct. Before that, if any other sounds are playing, end those and play this scene's music. This is looking forward. I know that this is going to happen later. I just want to get it done now. As we go to the different screens of the game, for example, the game over screen, we're going to have sad music. If we go to restart the game, the sad music will keep playing when we're back on the title and it's going to play my title music. Unless I tell it, stop playing any previous music to play the new music. That's similar to those keys that we got out of the library and put on screen. And when we got the right key and went to the end, the keys were still there unless we programmed it to remove the keys in the new scene. This is similar here. Remove the old music, then play the music of this scene. And the code to stop any music, we saw this previously, but now it'll make sense. Sound mixer dot stop all. There happens to be any other music playing up to this point in the game, stop it, then play the music of this scene. For the things that you don't realize until you play your game, you test your own game and you move from screen to screen and you play it like with fresh eyes and then you find out something you didn't think of. Or you have someone else play your game and observe them playing your game, and then you figure out, oh, that's something that I didn't uh, that I didn't think of. It's the purpose of beta testing a game to find problems and head off problems and fix problems. All of this pause is when I pause the game. The game will be paused when I leave the game and then unpaused when I return to the game. Okay, let's set that up. I detect, listen for pausing the game. Keep track of the frame of the music. What frame number of the music? native application. We saw that when we wanted to exit the game. 
native application. This is to access code of the device itself. Where is the game running on? It's running on a device, a native application. Have another native application, but spelled differently. So be careful about that. Lowercase there, uppercase there. Native application dot native application dot add event listener. I've seen event listeners before. Previously, event listeners were attached to a button. Button for me to go to the help screen. The button has an event listener. Here we are setting up listen for a particular event happening on the device. This is going to be a long line, so hopefully I can show it all on one line here. Um, but here we have event capital E dot deactivate. There is an event of deactivation. That is what's happening behind the scenes. When you're running a particular app, you switch over to another app. The current app is deactivated. And then another app is activated. So we're going to detect when do we exit the game, comma, run some code, just like every other event listener we've had. When we detect that that button has been tapped, run some code in this new instance of code here. All of this basically at the beginning is saying this phone, when we deactivate this app, run some code. On this, um, instead of zooming out so you can't read it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump to the next line, but all of this is still the same line. Make sure that what you're about to type here is still within the parentheses. But I'm gonna jump over here to make it visible. So after the comma, run some code, fn, it's a function, music, title, pause. There's a function that deals with music in the title screen when we pause the music. Copy and paste that complete line. Detect, listen for returning to, unpausing the game. Return or to restart the music from a certain frame. The illusion of pausing and restarting the game, the music happens because we, instead of starting from the beginning of the music, we start at, you know, 23.7 seconds where we last left off. And so what this needs to change is we are now going to activate. Be very careful that you change that to activate. These are the opposites, deactivate and activate. When we pause the game, run some code. When we unpause the game, run some code. That should make sense there. Code that is all about pausing the music, code that is all about restarting the music. We have to be detecting when we pause, when we return with a listener, a new kind of listener. Make sure that's typed correctly. It's not a touch, a touch tap. It's a different type of event. And there's deactivate and activate here. Be very careful on that. Then I have to define the functions of both of these chunks of code. Define the function for pausing the music. There's a function here called something. It's got parentheses, colon. Now, Note not void, 
but number. All this while where we've been using a function after we clicked a button, we had colon void curly braces. Here, make sure that's number, not void, unlike every other function. Very obvious there because it's very important that you do that correctly. That one word that is wrong is going to make it not work. All your other dozens of lines are correct, but that one word, if you let it be void like we've always done, it will not work. Similar to that, define the function for restarting the music. It's back to void, not number. I'm listening for the game to be deactivated, run some code. The definition of that code is right here, will be right here. It's based on a number, the, the number of seconds that the music has played. That is detect when we come back to the game, run some code. The definition will be there. It has the usual void data type. On each of these, like we've seen before, we need the uh, usual uh, that we set up for, for ourselves. Just doing some quick copy and paste here to... Um, Save myself some effort. Copy and paste is so useful as a programmer. So it's not complete yet, but I can do a test here by running my code, maybe fixing my error actually. So let me fix that error. Function does not return a value. Okay, because the function is not complete. Um, I guess I can throw in a quick return just to make sure. Uh, uh, yeah, this will just be for a test. Don't do this, but just to test this uh, back on this, this expects a return value. So we'll say uh, returns return one. Don't do this, but I just need to put this in here for a moment to make sure my code works. I'll explain what it means and what it should be in just a moment. Let me just confirm this works. As I start to add sound, it's gonna get a little bit slower testing. This is doing an error. Match, argument, mismatch, music, play, expected zero, got one. Okay, that's, I'm gonna ignore that error for the moment because I think the code is incomplete. So I think I'm gonna ignore that. I was just gonna test, does it detect when I exit, when I pause the, the app? I guess, because the code is incomplete, we're getting that error, but let me complete the code and then we'll check it. So what I want to do here in the pause function We have this variable I defined at the top here, music title of pause set to zero. When I first create this variable, it's zero, and zero in this case means start to play the music from the beginning. Well, this variable here is now going to come into play on the pause function. Set the current 
frame of the music. So music title pause is going to be now changed to whatever the music frame number is. What's keeping track of the frame number is music title play. That variable is counting from zero to the end of your song. And so we're saying whatever position that is, that number, store it in this variable so that when we pause the game, it remembered, oh, you paused it while the music was playing at one minute, five seconds. Stop the music so it doesn't play in another app. Stopping music is that command there over and over. Sound mixer stop all. Turn number that's in music title pods. So when we detect that we pause the game, keep track of what time we pause the music, stop the music, and then return or keep track of, keep it in memory, um, what that number was. So that then when I restart the game, we can use that number. When the game restarts, we're going to trigger this function. Is it title play? Will be set to music title not to play. And before we had play us from the beginning, loop it one time, uh, well, that number that we're keeping track of, music title pause, one minute, seven seconds. When we get back to the game, play the music from one minute, seven seconds, loop it. That should be the code. Let me just test it and I'll come back to it one moment and make sure that works. Um, it, it is causing an error. Okay, what is that error? Um, argument error count mismatch. On music play, music title play expected zero got one. What are we saying there? Music play, music play, music play expected zero got one. So this is saying it's not supposed to have properties, but we did put a property. What is that? This kind of error is not the one that is going to tell you what line number to go to, unfortunately. I'm not sure why it doesn't. But I've noticed that with this type of error, it doesn't do that. So let me think here for a moment. Let me double check my notes. Um, smash on music title play. Okay, so the way I would diagnose this error, it's telling me something's happening under music title play. So I'll go back to my notes here. I will control F to find, find me music title play. Just have to confirm here. Music title play. Music title play. Music title play. Music title play. 
So in one of these, I mistyped something somewhere. Just confirm. I'm going to assume it's the first instance. So my music title, music title play, sound channel, music title play, sound channel, music play. And I got two items here, which should be correct. Music title play. Sound channel. I spelled sound channel correct. That is related to music title. That is spelled correct. Good. Copy and paste just to make sure. That's got a play. Zero to one. Let me back up here just to be sure. So something is a music title which is the linkage that I, I copied and pasted that, so that should not be the error. That is a new instance of that, so that should be okay. That music title play, music title play, the same way. Without... Title play is equal to music title play x comma. Okay, that seems correct as well. That's the same as the one above, but it's just start it. Detection. This is function music title play, which is unrelated. Music title play. Music title play that matches. This has got number. Pause. Comes from music title play. It's position that seems right. Title play is equal to play it, which that should be the same as the one up here. As you see, even the teacher can make a mistake, but this is how I would figure it out. I'm talking to myself out loud to reason it out. I'm just reviewing the code, which is code that previously worked, of course, still getting the error. Okay, so. Oh, it's, it's FN music. Okay, I know what it is now that I look at it carefully. It's FN music title play. Uh, it's the function, not the variable. Okay, of course. So the function, here it is. Uh, music title play right here. So we're saying, uh, and both of these are wrong, actually. It hasn't triggered that one yet. Uh, both of these are incomplete, not wrong, incomplete. Uh, similar, I see it here. So similar to when we had the every other something, listen, play a function, play a function. I'm forgetting the inner part right here of the uh, parentheses, then void or number. So this part's missing on both of these. That's the error. Um, I had to look at it again that it was telling me. That's why I named it FN. I should have seen my own name there. FN, it was look at your code about the function, not the variable. So both of these are missing something within the parentheses here. That's the error in its event. Event, capital E. So these. It's not related to a tap event like my other event listeners. It's related to the event of music. So generically music event. That's what's missing in both of these. And that's what it was trying to say. Um, function title play expects zero parameters, but instead you have one parameter. Uh, so, so now we've set up one parameter. So this function has one parameter. Expecting one parameter got one parameter. So that should get it. I just realized also for those of you at home, you haven't been hearing the music. No one has said anything on the chat. But I realize I'm not playing the music at home. 
play the music for a moment and then I'll turn it off. That should be the issue there. Both of these I forgot to add the event. No error. If I, if this were running on a real device and I switched to another app, it would trigger the activate, and I can simulate that simply by clicking elsewhere. Uh, I didn't click on the app. I clicked elsewhere. So look at that. Um, it detected the pause. If I go back to the game. It detected the play. If I, 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 I switched to Zoom, it detected the pause. It stopped the music. I go back to the game. So it is detecting that you're exiting the game and re-coming back. And the music continues to play from the moment you left the game. So all of this chunk of code is something I would do pretty much exactly the same on every screen that I want different music. Right now I've programmed it that the title music plays on the title scene. I've reached into the library and via linkage created a variable. Um, to play a certain music, I've set myself up how it's going to play. I've set myself up to keep track of the frame of the music so that when I stop music, I can restart it at the right point. I've added a new listener to detect when we leave the app and return to the app. And then there's code to play or pause the music. All of that chunk of code uh, after the break. We will add that to other parts of the game because I want to have different music in different parts of the game. Here's the code up to this point. It's a long item, kind of, 162 to 208. But that's why I also set up the background music code marker further set it up like this so that you have the visually that there's a chunk of code in here that is all related to the topic of background music. So when we do the other sounds, I could do a copy and paste of this whole chunk from here to here, change the things that are necessary, such as music, bad ending, muse, bad ending, new bad ending, music, bad ending, play, blah, blah, blah. So the things that make the sense to change should make sense to change. There's going to be all of this chunk here for the other screens after the break. So it's 1.20. Let's take a 10-minute break. During the break here, if you'd like to uh, request headphones, I can give you some headphones so you can actually hear, so you can start to select some music over from YouTube. And uh, we'll be back in 10 minutes. All right, let's continue this. So um, something very similar is what we need to do for any scene or we want it to have its own unique music. Um, so I'll do it the long way by typing everything again, and then we can do the shortcut way by copying and pasting. Uh, so if this is all happening in the main title screen, well, when the game actually starts on the gate here, I want new music to play here. Well. I need more music, so instead of this one that I got, I'm going to go back to YouTube, grab something else. Uh, this time I do want to do a search, like maybe scary. What kind of scary music is there? Kind of cool. Okay, so missing persons. I'm going to do that. 
Uh, so missing person. So I'm going to download that. Just like before I downloaded it, I then need to put it into my project folder. So I will move it out of the downloads folder and put it into my project folder. Once it's in the project folder, I then need to import it into animate, file import to the library. Part of my library item. One thing that you could do that is completely optional, you can rename your sound files here so that they're organized together. This doesn't matter, but for example, we've named the sprites SPs, some things that are buttons have BTN. On the music, they happen to be near each other, H, then M, then S. If I wanted to, I could name these, you know, music headlands, music missing persons, just to keep them together within the library, because later on I could have a sound file at the top of my library, one in the end. And that doesn't matter, but if just for you to find them easily, you can name them with a prefix. The important part though, is it needs the linkage. So just like the other sound, I'm gonna select it, then go to the properties of that sound within this window, switching to the actions, create action script, give it some name, go with Muse, this is more music. Uh, this is music of the main game, let's say. You can call it whatever you want, of course, but this is the music of my main game. I'm gonna use that, music main, music main play, music main pause, FN music play. That's my sort of base name for all my code. Click OK on that. It will remind you if you didn't turn on the don't show me, it'll just say we need to do this, which of course, do it. Now that's got linkage. So we had the step one, download and import the sound. Step two, add linkage. Step three, the code. And then step three has all those sub steps. Create the variable for the music, create the variable for the pause, create the function for the pause, create the function for the replay. Within this gate, I'm gonna set up the code for music in this particular screen. Don't need to do the, the code at the very beginning, like we did back on title scene where we activated the uh, ability to use code. Since I did it on frame one, scene one, that will apply to the future of all scenes. So we don't need that. But on each one of these scenes, we need the rest. We need the uh, sound mixer stop all to stop any previous music. We need the uh, we need the variables and everything else. So for myself, I will just create that little block of code area. Optionally. Need the part to stop all the music. Is the sound mixer dot stop all. So the previous music that was playing in the title screen, oops, the previous music that was playing in the title screen, I want to uh, cut that. And then I want to start this new music. And I have some kind of error here. So hopefully my game didn't crash. Let's try that again. that was about, but is this gonna crash? Will this, will this be my first crash this semester? Right, so this is to remind you, save your work just in case if whatever happens and everything crashes and you need to start out, uh, get back to the game, uh, that's why you've, you've been saving your work and such. Ever noticed, I never really mentioned it, but as you are working in Animate, it is creating this recover file. And if things completely crash uh, and somehow you lose your, your game, there was probably a recover file created. You can open that recovery file and work from that. But in my case, it was just some 
slow down or something, but it seems to be fine. Okay, so I stopped all the sound, put a new variable to hold my music of the main game. Same sort of idea with these names. Music name, that is an instance of of music main. So it's that instance, that linkage name, which is equal to a new instance of that object. And a variable that keeps track of playing, pausing, one is related to a sound channel. capital C. The other one is a uh, number. One is set to playing the music. The other one is set to keeping track of the music playing. Dot play. Start from the beginning, this time I will put loop of 10 times. As we play the game, the music will loop and loop and loop 10 times to be safe. It's for 99 times. Just have the music keep playing while we're in the main parts of the game. Set up detect when we exit the game and then when we restart the game. So that was our events listener for our native application. Weird spelling here, where it's capital N first, and then lowercase n second. It's just the way it has to be. That has an events listener. We've seen those before. detect the event of activate and deactivate. It's all in capital letters. That's for activate and deactivate. That point of detecting that we um, uh, activated the game and deactivated the game is to further run a function. Break this to the next line just so you can read it. Function of music of the main game when we play versus the function when we, oops, when we pause, then when we play. The purpose of these two listeners is to then run some code. So we will create two functions. So I do this, that I know that I'm going to write the code in various ways. I will write both of them at once because one is for pausing the game, playing the game. So these have these event, this time I won't forget it, uh, event lowercase and then event uppercase. Well, these are the same. Here's the difference. Remember the pause is related to detecting a number. What is the current seconds of the music, which is a number. And to replay it, it's just a void as usual. It's not related to any numbers technically. Both have the curly braces. 
sort of like what you might call parallel coding. You're doing more than one thing at the same time, but you see the logic of it is very, very, very similar, except for little changes. Obviously, as a beginner, you might want to type one complete thought and then the next one. Here, I'm typing two thoughts at once. For beginners, that might be too weird, but you see the logic of it. That thought is very similar to that thought. That command is very similar to that command, so I just type them both at once. Break those apart. Both of these, I want to uh, optionally do the usual trace that I have uh, run a particular code. Basically the same for play with a little change. The purpose of pausing is to detect that what second the music played so um, the pause variable will now change based on the music that is playing. What is the position? So music that is playing, what is its position? Out of curiosity, you can also do this. You can trace. Oops, you can trace to say uh, paused at. Have it tell us that number if you're curious. It's going to be milliseconds. But if you're curious what the number is. So um, trace that. But more importantly, return whatever that number is so we can use it in the rest of the app. Oops, don't forget that comma right there. Return whatever that number is so we can use it in the next function. The next function is, okay, let's start to play again. Uh, music, music, play. Oh, one more thing. Uh, before we return it, stop the current music so that it doesn't play in another app. Pause the game, stop the music. When we restart the game, return to the game. There is our music play, music main play is equal to our music at a certain location. Start to play it again. Location is the pause number. Keep looping it. What well, we could do, I believe it, this should work, if we add music main pause plus one. Technically, this is slightly more correct because when we exited the game, we exited at you know one one minute seven seconds. When we return, we can we can return one fraction of a second after that second if you want. Specific. But the logic of it there is return at the exact same moment. So technically you're playing you're playing the exact same moment of music. No one's gonna notice. You're not gonna notice. No one's gonna notice. But I'm just showing here for the most technically correct. Start to play right after the last moment where you paused it. One moment later. Good work. If it doesn't, we'll remove it. Um but then that sets up new music for a new scene. This time I did it without any of the comments. And I also put in one extra thing there. But just like the raw code all by itself, it's line 17 to 38 or 37, 30 lines of code, basically. So it's 30 lines of code to make it play a specific sound in a specific scene, keeping track of when you leave the game and such that is stripped down compared to the scene one where it's like 80 lines because I had a bunch of comments, but let's see if that works. So uh, 
Let's see if I mistyped anything. And again, now that we're adding these sounds, the game will the game will um, load up slower and slower uh, as we test it. The intro sound. Exit the game. Pauses. Back to the game. Restarts. Yeah. Now I care about uh, when I when I start the main game. I have to activate my touch here. Back to the game. There's a weird bug here, actually, I remember. Um, when I switch over to the simulator here and turn on touch, back to it, it might be a slightly weird bug. But start the game. So the old music stops, new scary music plays. Play as I go through the game. I'm going to go to a bad end, restart, which should play the intro music. Restart. Because on the intro scene, we set it up that on the intro scene, that if there's any um, any other music that might be playing, stop that music, play the title screen music as we expect. So if I run that again, this time I'll go to a good ending and then back to the title, it should also continue to work. This is the part of the beta testing, testing all possibilities. <laughs> Oh, let's say I tested that I got a phone call. So I switched to my other app. I switched to another app. Should I pause the music? Right here, let's put on the title music. Exit here. That time it detected I paused the main game music at 8,267 at 8 seconds and 26 milliseconds. What about if I go back? Let's play the title and the main music. That's good. Cool. So something to fix in a moment. I will deal with that in a moment. What I want to do is if we go to a good ending, we start the correct music. That, if I go back to the, if I go through the game again, and check all of this, let's see if I go to the good ending again. You say your AC is so noisy. When that one turns on in a moment, it's like very rattly mm -hmm. and noisy. That's the one that I've noticed. The one in the back doesn't seem so bad. Have any of you back there noticed that one being too no noisy back there? What time you start your class tomorrow? Uh, to I'm not here tomorrow. There's no class. My class. There's no class for me. I don't know if there's any other class. Yeah, but so we're like gonna take a look at the moment. Yeah, no problem. Okay. So Monday from for this class, it's Monday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, okay, twelve to three. But tomorrow okay. there should be no. Class. Okay, thank you. I will uh, take a look at tomorrow. No problem. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We're seeing here that yes, as we go through the various screens, and here's the part about testing it because the uh, weirdness happened here where I where I exited the game and restarted and such and different sounds played. So I got to think about what's going on there in a moment. Notice that's not a syntax error. That is a logic error. So we'll test that in a moment. 
to fully figure it out. But I want to add now the music of the, um, oh, I know what it is. It's the event listener. If we're not in the event, if we're not in the title screen, we should turn off the event listener in the main game. We Because right now, as I said, in scene one, we set up all of our code. And on any scene that is triggered, all of that code is in memory. I just left right now. You could have heard it. <laughs> but uh, the thing is that, so when we go to the main scene, it's still thinking, it's still remembering to listen to the title music, even though I'm not in the title, and then we replay the music. So I think if I do a remove event listener right now, that should that should cover it. Let me try that right now, actually. So same thing here. Um, these two from the title, from the title, I'm going to copy the, the listeners from title, and then I'll put them into main. The order probably matters, but I'll put it here. Say also deactivate any previous listeners. So remove event listener. Event listener. That's all we need for removing a listener. The logic of all of this. Uh, it'll change on that, it seems. We have, okay, so this, this uh, function is back on the first scene. Uh, so I guess to be the most correct movie clip, uh, back on the main timeline, this root, that function. Should be it. Let's see. We're not in the we're not in the um, we're not in the title anymore. We're in the main game, so only pay attention to the main game listeners. Stop paying attention to the title listeners. Logically, that seems to make sense. So let's see. That works in the simulator. I can trigger it. If I can trigger that. Uh, use case again. I don't know what I, I don't know how I triggered it both. Probably just switching the apps. So we'll add the ending music in a moment. So I'm keeping an eye out on my output panel there. I switched to another app. Yeah, so here's this little bug that I was saying. When I switch over to the simulator and I click relocate, I can start to interact. But if I then select the game, it turns off touch. Reactivate touch and then interact, it should be okay. Technically, I didn't restart the game. Oh, I'm gonna exit the game. So I saw that it paused that six seconds. Back to the game. The... Yeah, it's only playing the right music. Good. Good ending. He starts. Music should restart. Listener should come back. The title music, play the main game music. Ending. Start the 
good. So yes, the uh, logic error was that I also needed to deactivate listeners from previous scenes so that if I do pause the game, they're not listening to then restart the wrong music. I have that on my notes, but with more testing, we figured that. Okay, final music uh, for a bad ending. I'm going to do the bad ending, which is exactly the same as this. I'm going to leave it up to you eventually for a homework to do the good ending music. It's going to be, we're going to do it together, the same thing three times. And you'll need to do it for the good music eventually. Uh, homework in two weeks or something. Um, so for the bad ending, something very similar. I need another sound. Let's see another scary sound here. Perfect. So, bad ending. Okay. So, download that. Move it into my project folder. my project folder, then import it into animate. I'll uh, rename it there because this one does get out of order. There's F H M. It's out of order. Optionally, I'll just rename it so that they're grouped together. My musics. It needs linkage. It needs linkage. I guess I can type it manually here, but I'd feel safer if I uh, select that music, go to properties, go to action script, activate export, give it some name. And bad. In the, in the, bad ending screen, start to set up my code for music. Very similar to what I previously did. This time I will copy and paste, I'll make some changes. Uh, some copy and paste is very useful because you make a little change. For me, this is, this is um, for me, because the way how fast I can type, it's not so much, but maybe for you, this copy and paste might not be as helpful as it could be. Uh, so uh, the music, that I just set up on the main game. I'm gonna copy that whole chunk. That's why I also marked it off there so I can easily tell where it is because I'm gonna need it all, but with some changes. In the end, ending scene, all of that code, just pasted it in, need to make some changes. So the very beginning, of course, stop any previous music. Now I'm, in the, I'm dealing with music of the ending of bad, so music, of end of bad that's coming from the library and bad then I'm dealing with end bad play add pause Dick. Uh, and bad dot play. That matches there. Listen for deactivation to play a function. Bad and pause. And bad pause. and play of the ending of bad that places that that remember this trick you can double click a little chunk of code and it will select it completely for you instead of clicking and dragging and missing you can double click to select one chunk of code triple click selects the whole line so that pause double click 
double click there, paste, and play, double click that, copy, double click, paste there. Paste that if you want to be the most accurate and in the comment. So again, this is a this is the copy and paste. It might be way too much copy and paste. I mean, way too much changing your copy, fixing your copy and paste. It might, you might jumble it up in your mind. You might then write it manually. Either way, you get you get to the end result of this working, but you have to juggle that in your mind about what's the text. So music main pause, nope, music end bad pause. Music main play, no, it's music and bad play. Position. This pause is here and here and here. Very important. Play the music. We've got the play of bad end on the object that is holding it. Play from the pause point. one oh yeah and then the listeners so um technically technically i already triggered this code back on the gate to stop paying attention to the title scene from the gate i went through the whole game i get to the bad ending or good ending so i've st still stopped paying attention to the title music so technically i don't need to continue so i don't need to again stop paying attention i've already stopped paying attention back on the gate um, so then this should be to remove now the main music, main music, music uh, functions. What did I call those function music, um, main pause and main play? Everything else is the same, of course. There's listeners that we're removing to stop paying attention to a function. Just check my spelling. I forget what I call these things as soon as I create them. So double check it. I called these things music main play, music main pause. Yes. Play and pause. Okay. So the last bit of event listener that was floating around in memory was about the main game music. So at the ending, I am stopping to pay attention to the main music. I am continuing to stop to pay attention to the title music as soon as I got to the gate. That should be it. So it's it's this whole chunk again from line 26 to 53. That's 20, that's 30-ish lines of code to get music to play at a specific scene. You would do this same thing for the good ending, changing the appropriate things, good versus bad, etc. This is part of the reason also the way why I name these things this way. This is related to music. It is related to the to end ending. It is specifically the bad ending. It is pausing. When you do this with a good ending, you're just going to change the parts of good and bad. Should make sense. Let's see if it works. Um, trigger a bad ending that should cut any previous music. Play this new music. When I restart the game, back to the title music. And I'll test pausing and restarting the game, pausing and returning to the game for the full completion so that it tests the remove listeners. Taking even longer to process now because I've got now a third sound file. Curiosity. So now my project is up to 59 megabytes. Uh, when I started, it was, it was one megabyte. Now it's 59 megabytes. So be careful about that. What 
what is happening is every time you add more music to the game, you get bigger and bigger. the logic of things that as you test it, you figure out all of these little things. Um, technically, again, you code gets put into memory until you remove it. And so I managed to get to the end. The bad ending music gets into memory, the listener. When I'm in the title, it's still in memory. If I pause the game and return to it, it's still in memory about replaying the bad music. So it replayed the bad music. <laughs> All the previous music, that's what Stop Mixer is all about. And it will program anything for the good music. So it'll continue. It'll continue to play the main music in the good scene because I never programmed anything about music there. The one thing you'll do eventually where you will set up the good music. Let's see if I pause the game. It's playing bad music. Start the game, everything should go back to normal. So, there's some little polish there, but we will do that later, or you will do that later, but I'll make the note here. Um, remember to, so there's a to-do, um, remove listener. Or... So, main music, and bad. Any other instances of any other music that you may add, you might have a different music also in the um, in the help screen. Um, but this is to remind me at some point I've got to add these list. I've got to remove these listeners um, because the uh, they stay in memory unless otherwise you deal with it. Okay, um, let's do something here. The last thing for today, uh, we can kind of vote on this. You can I either say so in the chat box, so everyone there, uh, you're gonna vote here in the chat or here in person. Uh, the last thing we can, voting of, we can do it today or we can do it next time. We have plenty of time, um, is adding sound and it'd be similar to what we're doing right now. But it would be then adding sound to specific sound effects to specific interactive elements. When I play the, um, when I interact with the gate, I want it to play a sound of creaking wood. When I break the window, I want it to play sound of breaking window. It's going to be very similar to what the um, code we've seen so far for background music. But this is a lot to absorb for the moment. So let's vote here. Do we want to spend now or next time 
to add the code for uh, sound effects. Right now we've done background music, sound effects. Uh, we want to do that at some point. So do we want to vote now or next time? What do we think, now or next time? I vote next time, what about you? My vote matters the most. So uh, yeah, we'll do this next time then. We'll end at this point for some open lab time and such for you to practice. We got another vote here, thank you. Um, we'll do the sound effect next time. It's gonna be very similar to the music, but it's gonna now trigger at a certain point when you interact with some element. Opening the door, breaking the window. The monster growling and such. So we'll do that next time. At this point, I'll save this. I'll put my example code up on Canvas if you want to review my code. I'll add the recording um, when that finishes processing. Uh, last week's homework was due yesterday. Uh, you still can turn it in, of course. You really want to turn it in because the code check-in will show you that you're on track or not. If you need help, I'll help you. The assistants will help you until 3, until 3 p.m. Uh, next week, we'll learn a little more code. Next week, there will be an assignment. And just like this last code check-in, uh, you're going to need to start to apply some of what we've been learning into your own game. Uh, what that will be was what we've learned last week, uh, which was the getting to a good ending, getting to a bad ending, um, the uh, random numbers of the keys and such. So whatever we did last week, this stuff of this week of the music, well, eventually that's going to be for the final project because next week, looking at the calendar, we have we have the week next week to to finish the sound effect. We're gonna we're gonna do the cutscenes. We're gonna then do the um, player select. We should be able to do that next week. Um, there'll be an assignment, the second code check in that will be due on the twenty third if all goes well. And then we've got the final week of the class in three weeks. But again, looking at the calendar, it's not that far away. And on the final version of the game, well, that'll be the final version of everything. It's got the music, it's got the interactivity, it's got the various screens, and that's coming on the final week sometime of the first week of August. Probably August 4th, maybe the 6th. I'm not sure if I can extend the deadline to the 6th. Technically, the, technically the class ends on Thursday the or Saturday the 3rd, I think. I think that's when it officially ends, but we'll make the deadline probably on Sunday. I don't think I can extend it all the way to Tuesday. And the reason I'm making them on Tuesday is because we can have one final day of lab time Monday. But when the class is over, we won't have lab time. So probably the final project will be due August 4th. That's still three weeks away, so don't think about it too hard. But you do need to be turning in your work, especially the code check-in that was due yesterday. Take a quick look here. How many of you did it? Five of you. Okay, so most of you haven't. Definitely do that. Every point matters, and this is 15 points, and all the code adds upon itself. So if you didn't do the first check-in, when you do the second code check-in, you're going to be even further behind. And guess what? By the end, the third code check-in is the final project. So definitely crunch time is coming. So the other 10 of you that didn't turn in the work, do it or you're going to fall behind and ask for help as you need it. So lab time early, if you want to stay for that, which I recommend you do, just because we started early and it's a nice summer day doesn't mean go to the beach, it means work. So we'll end at this point.